Welcome to Sugar River United Methodist Church here in Verona, Wisconsin. My name is Gary Holmes. I serve as pastor here. And what a blessing to welcome you to worship today. We continue our series in Lent looking at uh, Made for a Miracle. And today the focus is upon the power of prayer. It's amazing how many people long for a prayer life that's vital and influential in their life. And yet, it's interesting, it's also one of the most neglected disciplines. We might have prayers of thanks for a meal or for the day at the end of the day. But so often we kind of miss the power that prayer offers our lives. And so today I hope we get a clear understanding of what we can learn from Christ about prayer and how we can incorporate in meaningful ways that we might activate the miraculous presence of God more in our life. I really believe God's called us here to celebrate and be together virtually as we are that we might encounter God, expect the presence of God today. So thank you for being here. And let's continue our worship um, by kind of celebrating the wonder, the all, the beauty, the mystery of God, the divine in our lives, uh, by singing together, God of Wonders. And I know as we're sitting there at home, uh, we might have children running around, or uh, maybe we're even by ourselves, whatever the setting might be. I just hope that we can take this moment, set it aside, breathe deep the breath of God, enter this time of worship with meaning. Let us join together in this song. Good morning, my name is Hannah. 
please hear these words of invitation to worship. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. This is an old children's bedtime prayer taught to give comfort and security. It teaches us we are never alone and that we will always be cared for. Adults need this reassurance as well. Prayer helps us to remember this constant loving presence in our lives. Praying when we are happy and grateful keeps our personal line to God well-practiced and smooth. So when we are in need, we can connect swiftly and naturally. Our best first response is to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Dear listening, loving God, thank you for never being too busy to answer our call. Good morning, boys and girls. I have some special friends to help me with children's message today. So Vivian, can you tell us about when you have to practice patience? I have to practice patience when I'm taking my dog out on a walk because sometimes he doesn't always have to go to the bathroom right away, so we'll have to go on a long walk. Matthew, what about you? How do you have to practice patience? I have to practice patience when I'm fishing because sometimes it takes a while for the fish to bite the bait. And I have had to practice patience over the last three years as we've been doing construction on our house. So why we're talking about patience today is because our message is about praying. And the thing about praying that Jesus told the disciples is that they should always pray and not give up. That's important to learn because answers to prayer don't always happen right away. We don't want to give up. God wants us to keep talking to him even if our prayers are not answered right away or not answered in the way that we expect. So remember to practice patience in everything that you do and even when you pray to God. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, we know that you can hear us when we pray. When there's something we're asking for help, to not give up, but to keep on praying. We know that you love us and will answer our prayers in your time and in the way that is best for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Sarah Greenlaw. I'm one of the Stephen ministers at Sugar River. I'm so happy to be able to guide you in prayer today. I've been thinking about our breakthrough prayer and some of the words in it. For example, it says, open our eyes that we may see and embrace the new thing springing forth like a river in the desert. I'm thinking of those words during our time of Lent as we prepare for Easter, the rising of our Lord and the springing forth and the resurrection of all that that is. And I really like these words in our breakthrough prayer because to me, it's that preparation as we await that wonderful day of Easter and asking for that ability to see and open our eyes and embrace a new thing like a river in the desert on Easter, that Easter becomes that new thing like a river in a desert. So will you read along with me our breakthrough prayer? Creative and life-giving God, open our eyes that we may see and embrace the new thing springing forth like a river in a desert. Refresh and renew us so that we may have the courage to follow your path and share Christ's love. You know, when I look out over the sea of prayer, it can be really overwhelming to know what and how to pray. So once again, I offer an option for prayer, the three-part prayer. Pray for something you're thankful about, pray for something to pray about, and then pray for a way to do something about it. So first, pray for something that you're thankful about. As I offer a few things to be thankful about, I invite you to think of some things that you are thankful about and let those come up to your heart and your mind as I suggest a few thoughts as well. So thank you, Lord, for during this time of year, even though there is snow on the ground, thank you for the crocus that are actually blooming in gardens right now. Thank you for the wonderful warmth 
of the spring weather and the gorgeous sunshine that we have recently experienced that lets us know that light and wonderful, wonderful warm weather and what that does to our spirits is coming. Thank you for all of that. Part two is to pray about it. So again, as I offer some thoughts of prayers about it, let some things in your heart and mind be released as well. Lord, prayers for all the children at the border. I'm sure that they are afraid. May your spirit fill them and comfort them. Prayers for all those are, who are sick and for those who cannot get to those who are sick. Let them know that they are loved and feel that love. May the love go back and forth between the sick and those that are far away from them. Let your love and comfort wrap around the hearts of all involved. And third, do something about it. Whether it's large or small, whether it feels like nothing at all, or something that might take a while to implement because it's big and involved. Whether you're young or old or somewhere in between, what is something that you might be able to do that you can show thankfulness, some love, or a way to make this world a better place? So with that, let's together say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now if we could all together just seal this time of prayer with one collective breath, breathing in the power, the glory, and the peace of God, and breathing out all that doesn't serve us in this time. Here we go. Breathing in. And breathing out. Amen. Good morning, my name is Maggie Boyd. Today's scripture comes from Luke. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we're into week five of our Lenten series, Made for a Miracle. We're two weeks away from Easter. Next week is Palm Sunday. We have incredible activities and ways we can connect and allow the meaning of the season to guide our way. But today we talked about activating the power of prayer. 
the basis really of a lot of the miraculous that can happen within our lives. And it is mysterious. It's not easy to understand. There's no formula that holds God in compliance to our will. This is about living and breathing into life with the divine activity that the miraculous can happen. Remember that formula that we start out that you're made for a miracle, that uh, we have God's intervention, but we also have our own initiative to create the opportunity. There's a cost to it. It doesn't come easily. It takes all we have sometimes for the miraculous to happen. But the benefit we talked about is that there's this power of love that reaches out to us that we begin to experience and understand in ways we hadn't before. Last week we talked about the power of faith, trusting, moving in our life as God leads and directs us. A faith And it's not defined by just belief, um, but by a conviction to move into the world as God leads us to follow. Today, prayer. You know, the gospel references Jesus praying um, some 60 times. He knew that prayer was key to his power and connection. And, And there's mystery in that, isn't there? I mean, why wouldn't the incarnation of God, the very presence of God in Jesus, need to spend time in prayer? Well, Jesus is also fully human. And in that mystery, we also get an example of what it means to be human and to connect with the divine. If Jesus needed prayer for a life of mystery and mission, of sacrificial love, redeeming a world, reconciling a world with God, how much more do we? You know, it's after the healing of someone by the pool of Bethesda that Jesus was accused by the Jewish of of not keeping the Sabbath law. And he said, very truly I tell you, the Son of God can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his Father doing because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. The Gospel of John we read, by myself I can do nothing. The miraculous The powerful teaching and healing and ministry and reconciling work, death and resurrection, all find its power centered in the sense of connecting with God. And for Jesus, prayer played that critical role. Oftentimes, he would set aside, he would move away from the crowds, he would find times of solitude to be in prayer. And our text today talks about during that time, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray and he prayed to God all night long. It could be though that not only was Jesus gaining insight and understanding and and receiving direction for his life but maybe Jesus really just liked to be in prayer with God. So often being accused of not keeping the law but Jesus was clear that the law was not (laughs) Man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath is made for humanity. And, and, and Jesus had this uh, distinct ability to move into care and compassion for the world as the priority that God has for Jesus and then as we follow for us. And prayer just played that crucial role of connecting with in that moment and understanding. Jesus spent night in solitude and prayed. And that was all before he begins to select the small group of individuals that Jesus would send out. And we can see prayer preceding so many of the miracles and so many of the movements in the life of the church. Uh, The time that uh, Lazarus was raised from the tomb. Um, Over and over again, we see this this power and this connection of reflection and, and prayer with God that enabled Jesus to live into his ministry. The miraculous was happening. It's a mystery, isn't it? It's not a formula that we can generate to make God just fall in compliance. (laughs) It's us living into what God seeks and is doing currently. And it's so neat to meet people who value prayer enough to make it a part of their life. And one of those people in our church is Angela Guthrie. And I was so blessed to take an opportunity to chat with her about prayer. And so I invite you to uh, listen now as we hear uh, a conversation with Angela on 
uh, the meaning of prayer for her life. I want to thank Angela Guthrie, not only for just taking a moment to chat with us today about prayer, which I know is important to her life, but just so many things she does uh, in the life of the church and supporting its uh, life and mission and ministry. So Angela, thank you for being with us today. Yeah, thank you. So I'd start out by just simply, so, you know, we talk about this, you know, why, why is prayer important to you and, and how do you practice it? Well, I, I think prayer has been sort of central to my relationship with God. Um, I really like how the Bible says to pray without ceasing. And that's kind of how I think about prayer. Um, I think of that as being in an attitude of prayer all of the time no matter what I'm doing or where I am. Um, I kind of like that, that I can just say a quick prayer, no, no matter what situation mm. I'm in. Um, you know, one thing I was thinking, I, I had a Sunday school teacher in high school, and he would start out his prayers by saying, hi, God. And I just thought that was so cool because it felt like more of a conversation than a letter. So I still do that sometimes when I'm doing um, my personal prayers and makes it feel um, feel more personal. Yeah. I mean, can you think of times in your life when prayers really had a significant impact? I mean, is, is there an occasion in which you think, wow, um, I needed this access to God through prayer and something come to mind? Yeah, I don't know if I have um, specific examples there, but I think I I end up praying, I think, for the same things over and over. Mm. And usually it's not asking God to do a specific thing. It's more like, God, give me comfort or clarity or help me to make the best of a situation. And I find myself praying for those things over and over again. And I like that I can go back to those prayers anytime I'm experiencing a tough situation. Yeah. I just love how you kind of lay out prayer in terms of that conversation with God that's ongoing and that we don't need to stop and pause and fold our hands or we can just in the moment be connected. And I guess that's what faith does to us. Anything else you would want to say to uh, someone who might be listening today in terms of how prayer can be more a part of their life? Yeah, I, I think um, thinking of prayer as something you can do anywhere and anytime is really critical. It doesn't have to be something that you do just at meals or just before bed. Um, anytime you're feeling stuck or in a tough situation, you can say a pr quick prayer to God. I think I was doing breath prayers before I even knew that what that was called um, and that's just you know you can say just a couple words you know God bring me comfort God help me to have patience and you can say those really quick prayers anywhere throughout the day and I think that's been uh, very helpful for me mm, awesome Beth prayers I've been doing those more this year than ever too just breathing in deep um God be honored in my life and not exhale and take the stuff that separates me from you or what? Yeah, I think that's, those are just practices that help us be more connected and see God active. So thank you. Thank you for your witness. Thank you for your commitment to prayer and I appreciate your time today, Angela. Yeah, it's nice to be here. It just seems so natural for Angela to, to talk about just prayer as if it's breathing. And, and you know, there's, there's made connections with the Jewish name for God, Yahweh, is in just saying it, it's like, Yahweh, it's like breathing. It's such a natural part of life. Well, Mike Slaughter in his book on uh, Made for Miracle, he talks about four essential dynamics involved with that connectional prayer life with God. A and he starts out by saying the first part is waiting. And waiting is that time of creating that holy space between seeking something out and then, of course, our action into it. Can't help but think of Isaiah uh, 40, 31. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isn't it amazing 
that what leads up to strength and renewal, to face life, to fly with wings like eagles, starts with waiting upon the Lord. We so want things quickly and, and get answers instantaneously. We want this microwave prayer life to work, but I think God's trying to create more meaning and more depth within our life than that. And so a big part of getting to that is waiting upon the Lord. And so often we're so busy and we just don't have time to pause, even to pray, let alone wait. We're just too busy. We would rather move quickly to pursue our own good rather than wait to attain God's great. So it's really important that we will learn to wait in prayer. Not moving ahead of God, but, but moving with God. And this waiting is a time of listening and preparation. And that's where waiting can um, allow prayer to have such a powerful impact upon our life. Because it doesn't have to be passive waiting. It can be a waiting that connects us. It makes me think of certain types of prayer that are helpful. Uh, one is simply called a breath prayer. In, in way that we just calm our bodies and how important that is. Sometimes we've dealt with trauma and our bodies, they react in ways that cognitively we're not even aware of. And, and so it's breathing allows us to be aware of our bodies and to, to calm ourselves. And breath prayers is taking deep the breath of God and then intentionally exhaling. And, and maybe we can create uh, kind of a Jesus prayer based even on our scripture today. Breathing in, wait upon the Lord. Renew my strength. Wait upon the Lord. Renew my strength. Those pauses can be critical for our connecting with God and our, our sense of being. Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I'm God. Be still. May I know you, God. Now, all those opportunities to be open, to connect, to wait in meaningful ways. This is the way that God can break through, and that's why we have our breakthrough prayer that we've been emphasizing. This is a way of prayerfully saying, God, I want to see the new thing you're doing. Give me eyes to see. Give me a life of prayer <laughs> that connects me with what you're doing and how you want me to be a part of that. Last week, we had the lepers, and, and, and in that story, um, they call from a distance, Lord, have mercy, right? And, and maybe that can be a breath prayer, a prayer. Lord, Jesus, have mercy. What are ways in which we can connect with the scriptures and the call and our purpose? 415, if you're a part of the uh, Breakthrough Prayer Initiative, getting the text to 415, why? Um, well, 415 is our address. Um, for those that may have forgotten where we are, um, soon, very soon, we'll be coming back to this place. Um, but at 415 West Verona Avenue, at 415 p.m., we take a minute to lift up four prayer concerns, 15 seconds each. It's just another way of connecting us. We encourage you to think of internationally a prayer for 15 seconds. What's happening nationally for 15? What's locally? What's happening in my own life for 15 seconds? Just allow a minute to kind of generate that sense of waiting upon him, being with God. But after waiting comes this sense of obey. And it seems like so often again today that we, we connect faith with just a belief system instead of realizing that the conviction leads us to follow Jesus in the way of the cross, sacrificially loving, caring. So often our prayers just become really more about convenience than it is about aligning ourselves with God's will and how we're living. Jesus indicated in John 14, 13, I will do whatever you ask in my name. But we have to be careful. 
what that means and how easily we can use that phrase, again, to make God do what we want. But it's also about just being aware of the fact that because we, um, at the end of a request, put in in Jesus' name, that, that that's actually a prayer. That's when we can get in trouble about taking the Lord's name in vain, right? One of the Ten Commandments, and it's so often I think we associate that with not cussing because we hurt ourselves or, or we're angry. But that's really surface compared to the profound meaning of not taking God's name in vain. That's, that's when we say by faith we're doing something when we really don't even take God in consideration. We become practical atheists in how we address life and relationships. That's taking God's name in vain. Saying God's a part of it, but down deep, we have no desire to follow God into it. So obeying means being able to move in to follow and then to expect God's presence in that. Jesus says in Mark 11, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. There's a clear indication by this text that we are to be expectant in the power of prayer. I mean, when God gives us a vision for something, God also gives us provision. Never give up. Trust in God. And when I meet individuals who have that kind of faith, it just is empowering. It's not because they can ask God for anything and it just happens for them the way they understand it and the way they want it. There's just this expectation that God is active in their midst doing and working in powerful ways. You wait. You seek to obey. You expect God's presence. And then, of course, it all leads to action. In Luke 11, it says, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and obey it. From a distance, right? They're unclean. They're not accepted. Lord, have mercy. Jesus says to them, go to the priest and tell them what has happened. And on the way, they're healed. But the healing took actually a response of their obedience to respond. They moved, even without knowing what might happen or how God might fulfill their prayer. So what are we asking for miraculously in our own lives? I mean, prayer isn't just something that we pull out of our Christian toolbox once in a while uh, to fix something that's an urgent, miraculous need. It begins with the sense of living and breathing in life, much like Angela talked about in her prayer life. Daily dependence, interconnecting, like in our breakthrough prayer, with our eyes looking to seeing what new thing God is desiring to do. Prayer comes, but you know what? It's not always honoring our self-selected strategy for it. And it's hard. But the promise of God is with us. And the power unleashes our connection with God and God's will for our life. It changes us. It draws us deeper in a relationship. It brings meaning and allows the miraculous. Let us pray. God, thank you for a moment to pause. To verbalize our dependence upon you and our desire to turn to you in our lives. To follow the way of Christ. Help us not neglect the gift of prayer. And the opportunity we have at any moment to be in conversation. Even when those times we seem to be calling out from a distance, Lord, have mercy. You are faithful. May we trust in you. May we renew our strength as we wait upon you, not to be weary, not to grow faint. May prayer prayer become the power in which we make the choices that direct us in your will and purpose every day. Be with those who are struggling today, God. Or maybe a prayer has been offered for years. Lord, have mercy. Work upon them. Deliver them. Deliver all of us. And give us the hope and the strength and the power and the meaning of this season. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Good morning, Sugar River. This morning, it is my sincere pleasure to be joined by Lee Randall, who's the Director of Development at Mission Guatemala, 
and Dave Burns, who is Mission Guatemala's Executive Director. Lee is joining us today from the Mission Guatemala Corporate Office in Indiana, and Dave is joining us from Panajachel, Guatemala. Welcome, Lee and Dave. So I think we, uh, you both are aware that Mission Guatemala is one of our focus areas for Lent and giving this season. And um, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about the programs and services that our donations will help to support. Yeah, um, Mission Guatemala has just celebrated 10 years of serving in the San Andres re region. Um, our primary areas are health, education, and nutrition. And then, of course, we love uh, community relations that are developed and strengthened by welcoming teams in to serve alongside us. Mission Guatemala is a faith-based nonprofit working to improve the quality of life and meet the basic needs of the 19 rural communities that form the municipality of San Andreas Semitaba, about 70 miles outside of Guatemala City. Since our founding in September 2010, Mission Guatemala has focused on working in the areas of health, nutrition, and education. To help people have access to quality health care, Mission Guatemala operates a general medical clinic, pharmacy, an eye clinic, and a dental clinic, all of which are open to the public. These services offer affordable and respectful quality care to each patient from any community with access to low-cost medicines. Families often struggle to provide the nutrition necessary for the proper growth and development for their children. Mission Guatemala is working to help address this issue by building kitchens in public schools to help facilitate healthy and sanitary food preparation. Mission Guatemala also administers a full-time lunch program in the community of Nueva Esperanza and a snack program in the community of Chepec, which provide healthy and nutritious meals daily. The Como Sayadable program, which provides a healthy lunch in 11 communities twice a month, in addition to the lunch and snack programs, are built on a model of community collaboration, with Mission Guatemala purchasing the food and supplies for the meals in the local markets and mothers and members of the various communities being responsible for the food preparation. Mission Guatemala has also focused on supporting the public education system. We provide school supplies, educational materials, and scholarships, as well as access to a computer lab. In addition, Mission Guatemala has completed construction projects such as building classrooms, bathrooms, and hand washing sinks in the area schools to ensure the children have the resources to practice proper hygiene. Mission Guatemala's community development projects help give towns the tools to sustain themselves. By providing local families and schools with water filters, we can ensure that entire households have access to safe water for drinking and cooking. Well-designed and efficient stoves in schools and homes use less wood and vent smoke out of their indoor areas. The construction of playgrounds, soccer fields, and basketball courts in community schools give children a safe place to exercise and to learn new sports. Mission Guatemala has been able to positively impact the communities of San Andreas Semitaba by providing access to quality health care, nutritious meals, and educational opportunities to the Guatemalan people. We work with the leadership and individuals of each community to find meaningful, long-lasting solutions. Mission Guatemala is supported by donations and by volunteer mission teams, so we hope you'll join us to do all the good you can as we work to serve our friends and neighbors here in Guatemala. If you're interested in giving, um, checks can be made out to Sugar River UMC with Mission Guatemala on the memo line, or you can donate directly um, to Mission Guatemala on the Sugar River webpage. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're so grateful for Sugar River. Phil, thanks for giving us the opportunity to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you all. Good morning. It's such a blessing to have you worship with us online this morning. Now we take a moment to respond to God's gracious love by presenting our tithes and our offerings. We give proportionately from our income that God might be honored, others may be blessed, and we experience the joy of reflecting the image of God in our lives through our generosity. If you're a first time or new viewer this morning, please don't feel obligated to give. Your presence here today is a gift in itself. Your gift allows Sugar River to continue to remain an effective mission outpost. Please note the different ways to give on the screen. 
we would like to allow you time now to give as God leads. In an effort to better understand the impact of this ministry, would you please take a moment to like or comment within either platform how you view the service. Thank you. I'm so happy you took the time to be in worship today. My prayer, my hope, is that each one of us would begin to see the divine breaking through, the things that God seeks to do, the miraculous healing and, and hope-filled and, and gracious ways of developing community can happen in and through our lives. May prayer become more and more about what it means to live in our faith. Next week, we continue our series. We look to how, how to activate health and healing and what role that plays in our life. And we know how important it is. And I'm excited because Robin Kelby will again be delivering the message. I'm so grateful for Robin's gift. But it's Palm Sunday as well. And so we'll be having um, the, the standard Hosanna, loud Hosanna, and celebrating the children with the palms virtually. And uh, so I hope you can be a part of that and that celebration anticipation as we get ready then for Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday celebrations, recognition of uh, the incredible passion and the sacrificial love that Christ brings to all of humanity, followed by Easter, the great promise. Now, I want to mention on Easter, we're going to have um, a celebration here in the church parking lot. We'll have the FM transmitter. We have some activities, kind of fun. Um, I hope it's a, it's a joy for everybody to participate in it. It'll start at 8.30 in the parking lot. So please consider coming and, and being a part of that uh, activity uh, on Easter a week, two weeks from now. So thank you for being with us. And I pray now that the Holy Spirit be upon you to renew your lives. That if you're weary, that you might find strength. And that prayer might be as a part of your life as each breath, being aware of the divine presence, being guided and strengthened and understanding of who you are and the great purpose, that miraculous purpose for which you've been made. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Please.